All right, so talking a quick bit about patch 10.7 for TFT. I'd like to, I'd like to point out that they opened up with "Welcome Rebel Scum." They all know what we all know. Rebels were busted. Well, I shouldn't say that. Rebels weren't busted, but we'll get into that. A uh, little highlights pick, but we'll go a little more in depth here. To start off, new systems. They're putting in the Galaxies mechanic. I think I, I brought this up two weeks ago. Galaxies was something they wanted in this set, and it's going to be coming. They couldn't do it on release, so they're going to do it now. There are three Galaxies. First, the Nikoverse. So when you start in a Nikoverse Galaxy, everyone gets two copies of Nico's help. Um, now, I'll have to think about how the best way to optimize this is. If this was, if this was set, if, if this was set two, I'd probably be looking to save those to get a level three on, um, a tier two, a tier three champion. But this set, it seems like it's probably more important just to grab your tier, your tier five unit, your tier four unit, and just throw both in to get, get up to level two. Or if you're doing a uh, hyper roll, you can use this to quickly get a tier three of one of your tier twos that you're hyper rolling for. Uh, next to Nebula, so the first carousel will have entirely four cost units. So I had to think about what exactly this means and how how you would best optimize a first carousel being for only four cost units. Now the obvious thing we jump to is that you can probably get Mech Pilot in in like phase two easy it probably is not that difficult to get mech pilot in phase two if you pull a fit fizz is what you're going to go after 100 percent. if you see a fizz on the carousel that should be your first pick is to get fizz because fizz will allow you to make mech stupid early and pretty much none of the early game units are going to beat fizz or going to beat mech um, especially if you can start leveling up annie and rumble pretty early you're not going to be able to level up Fizz, but you can level up Annie and Rumble. And that'll that'll spike out your mech. Um, other things you can look for... Uh, I had a few of these. So Jin. Jin. Jin will be an interesting one. I think Jin probably will work out pretty well. Because you can combine with Jarvan and um, Mordecai's to make a very easy Dark Star 3. And I think... I think a very fast Dark Star 3, if you can keep Jin up, Jin should probably stomp out everything. Uh, another option is Jinx. Um, Jinx tends to do obscenely well in battles that go too long. Uh, I And with one thing that you often find in the early game is that you have a lot of champions that don't really do damage, and you have a lot of beef tank champions that you're using to hold up that you're planning on using to hold up the early game and even through the mid game. Well, Jinx can ruin that plan. Uh, you get a quick champion kill on something and Jinx just like smashes through everything. After that, I'm going to be honest, there's probably not that much to look for. Maybe Wukong, if Wukong ever becomes good, they'd, they'd, they'd really have to buff Wukong. The only advantage of Wukong, and we'll get to Wukong later, is that he's, he's a tanky boy. He has lots of HP. But, um, other than that, most I don't expect to be very overwhelming. Maybe the only other one is, is Cho'Gath, because with Cho'Gath, you can quickly get Brawler 4 up. You can pretty easily get Brawler 4 up pretty quickly, and it, Brawler 4 in the very early stages of the game is probably unkillable. So, that's my thoughts on the, the Nebula. Uh, next is Medium Legends. A lot of people are complaining about Medium Legends, so you'll start with an extra 25 health. Reality, that basically means that more people are going to last longer into the game, but the game itself is probably only going to last like another two rounds. Two to three rounds, give or take. Oh, the, only, the only way this one is really going to lengthen out your game is if you have two players that just don't lose, and you end up at the end of the game with two players with like 80, 90 plus HP, and then it takes you like five rounds to finish, finish each other off. When it already took you like an extra amount of rounds just to get to that point, um, I really don't think this one has much of a point. Uh, their their theory is that, or I should say, Riot's theory is that if the game lasts longer, you can play more riskier strats. Which, while is true, 
it also is only like two more phases. It really isn't that much longer. Um, if you weren't win streaking or lose streaking, you're not. It's not going to be a significant amount of gold to really last you that much longer. I I don't think this is really that interesting. These two are interesting. This one, and not so interesting. Um, anyway, it's not on this page, but each of these has a 15% chance of coming up each game, so the odds that you're in a galaxy is 45%, and the odds of playing a regular game is 55%. Other notes, drop rates. Uh, shop drop rates, they lowered, at shop level 8, the tier 5 from 7 to 6%. So, slightly less chance of seeing a, a, a tier 5 unit come up at the shop at level 8. Uh, someone did the math on that of, of how that's actually very relevant and very significant. I'm going to tell you that it is mildly relevant and mildly significant. It will make it slightly harder to make a tier 3 unit. At, um, ugh, a tier 5 unit, a 3 star, a 2 star, or 3 star even, because people have been doing that and it's fun to watch. Okay, this is a big one. Um, it, it would have been big in set 2. It's not as big in set 3, but it is pretty relevant. So... When you put items on champions and you try to bounce items off, but f previously it was entirely random. So what I mean is, if you have one champion in the field with three items, and you have, well, I shouldn't use that example. If you have a champion in, the, in play that has one completed item, and a champion on your bench that has three items, what would happen is, one of the items from the champions on your bench would be bounced off, and it was entirely random. Well, it wasn't entirely random. If, if it one was a thieves belt, it was a different story, but generally it was entirely random, and it would kick kick off some of those items. Now there's actually a priority to that. So, if I'm... I have to recall it correctly, though. First is champion on the field with thie thieves, thieves gloves. That stay, that's the... It's priority of stays on. So, champion on the field with thieves gloves stays on. Fully built items stay on for champions in the field. And lastly, components of champions in the field. Then the priority goes to Thieves Gloves on bench, full items on bench, component items on bench. In that order. So you should know exactly what items are going to be popped off if you attempt to pop items off. Now, items of the same... Well, you shouldn't know exactly, because items of the same tier are going to be um, random. So, if you have one completed item on the field and three completed items on the bench, one of the completed items on the bench will fall off, whereas the one item on the field will stay on. Okay? 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 Makes sense? Cool. Um, odds of special carousel reduce. What that means is, like, the all defensive items, all attack items, all, all chain vests, carousels, those were dumb, those were annoying, they came up way too much. And they kind of, they either ruined a build or they ruined a game. Like the all defense, I had, I once had a game where I had all defensive items come up three carousels in a row, and I was like, this is miserable because I also had pretty terrible item RNG <laughs> that game, and it was not a fun game to play because everyone was loaded up with guardian angels on everything, and it was horrible. Uh, they reverted the extra five seconds that they do. So, at the beginning of a set, they add five extra seconds to the planning phase. That is gone. That is returned to normal. We all know exactly what we're doing now, right? Cool. Trait changes. Blade Master. Uh, so, Blade Master 6 is now up to a 60% proc from a 55% proc. Uh, the key thing to note about Blade Master is that because of how Blade Master works, each extra hit of Blade Master gets this bonus. So, it scales exponentially. So, 5% is actually quite a lot. I still... But Blade Master 6 is probably still a bait. It's probably not actually something useful. So, we'll ignore that, pretty much. Brawler. Now, Brawler... So, I listened to Mort's... Mort's discussion on Brawler. And I, I, I thought it was rather intriguing. Um, the one thing he said was that Brawler was really overperforming and was probably the best defensive um, trait in the game right now. And I had to think about that, because, I mean, Hyper Roll Protector is a build that's, like, considered to be good, like, high B tier, maybe low A tier. 
Like, it's it's a good build. So, to, like, come out and say Brawler is, like, one of the best defensive builds in the game was kind of shocking to me. And we'll go through this a bit more, because Protector doesn't come up anywhere in this. And I was under the opinion that Protector was... Well, Protector does, but just a little bit. Protector, I thought, was probably the best defensive build in the game. And I thought um, Vanguard was probably kind of garbage. It's not... I, I don't think Vanguard's really that good, especially when you compare it to Protector. And Protector has much better synergies than Vanguard. But, um... Yeah, this is interesting. Um, I do think Brawlers are good, but I didn't... I didn't honestly think that they were... They were so good that they deserved a nerf, but, uh... I'll let it go. It's not a big nerf anyway. It's just kind of surprising to me. Um... Chrono. Chrono 6 is getting a buff. This is kind of irrelevant because Chrono 6 is a bait... And the reason Chrono 6 is a bait is because there's really there's really no build that you can make that's functional with Chrono 6. This is a big buff, don't get me wrong. It's just that, like, there's no actual fundamental build you can make with Chrono 6. You can make stuff with Chrono 4, but you can't really make anything with Chrono 6. There's, there's no great synergies to work with. Um, next, these are two big ones. So, Dark Star is getting a rework. Um, so... The thing with Dark Star, it was Dark Star was giving one ally, one one other Dark Star champion, a significant buff. Now it's changed, and it was a significant buff to like just pure damage. So if you were a spellcaster and you got this buff, <coughs> Lux, <coughs> Karma, you didn't really get anything out of this. Well, specifically Karma. I think Lux did, did still get a buff out of this because I think it did buff the damage. But I, Karma, Karma got nothing out of this. So. You lost all your Dark Star champions. All those buffs went on to Karma, and it was like, well, okay. So, what they've changed is it, you get an extra uh, 20, 25 damage and spell power. So, Dark Star three is actually Dark Star three is actually kind of a, a good build right now. A lot of people are running it with a Jin carry. Some people with a Shaco carry. Um, this probably allows you to better do like a Lux carry. Uh, I think three Dark Star is very good, and I think going into this patch, it will probably be about as good as it was before. And it was just kind of slightly underplayed early in this release, early in this patch, but it should be played a lot. It's played a lot more now, and it'll probably continue to be played a good bit more. Uh, this is a good functional change. Oh, not to mention that it goes to all Dark Star champions, so it's kind of like Shadow, but instead of getting it for takedowns, you get it when you're on champions die, which is nice, because you have Jarvan and Mordecai who run in the front line and get their faces beat in. Uh, next, <laughs> we're going to laugh at this one. So, before we start, I, I want to say, I tried to get Mana Reaver to work. I, like, looked at it, I was like, what synergies can I run to get four Mana Reaver up and make this awesome ability of making all these spells cost infinity? The answer is I couldn't. Um, there is, like, no cross synergy at all. At all for Mana Reaver. You, it, is, it is nigh impossible to get 4 Mana Reaver functional. I had better luck at trying to get Void functional than I did Mana Reaver. And Void is not good. So, this, was, this is a very big change. So, now Mana Reaver is gone... The 4-piece the four Mana Reaver is now the 2-piece Mana Reaver. So... All of your attacks increase the mana cost by 40%. There's no four piece anymore. It's all just two. This is really good. And this you can flex really easily. Where this really helps is probably in Cassadin. Um, Cassadin is a very underplayed champion, in my opinion. I've experimented with him a good bit. He's, he's surprisingly good. His ability of disarming in an AoE is actually just absurd. So, you can flex him in into a lot of Celestial builds. You can flex Thresh in into builds that you're already running a Chrono. You can... I mean, you're not going to flex Aurelia, because Aurelia is going to be your carry. But you, you get the idea here. This is... it's This makes it very easy to flex, and very worthwhile to flex Mana Reaver. Uh, next, Mystic. So, Mystic 2 gets a buff... To 35 from from 30 to 35, Mystic Four gets a debuff from 120 to 105. Uh, Mystic Four is good. 
Mystic Four was usually how you survived the mass of alting in the end of the game. Uh, so we don't see as much Mystic Four because Mystic. Let's be honest, Mystic Four is uninter is is it's just not interesting. You would I you want to keep it as a flex, but you don't want to have people running it every game because all of your abilities are too powerful. Uh, sniper bonus. So I'm gonna laugh at this because I saw this happen in one of my games. So this, just so you know, the sniper bonus. Uh, snipers for every hex uh, a sniper projectile travels, they get a 12% damage bonus. So now that's up to 15%. So snipers are kind of supposed to be carries, and they kind of are. They're just not as good as other carries right now. So I had a funny thing happen in one of my games. Um, so I was going up against one of my opponents, and I saw an ash arrow fly from off the board. And take out one of my enemy champions. So, yes. If your ult misses, it could fly across into other people's boards and smash them. And I'm assuming, get this buff. So, if you fly an arrow or a sniper shot all the way across boards. Multiple boards, I should say. And get massive amount of hex buffs. This is going to one-shot things. So, this can happen to you. Nice side note change I added. Uh, champions. Um, so this is a nice change to this. This is a pretty significant buff to 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 Caitlin. Or uh, Caitlin. Nah. Uh, the channeling time is significantly reduced. I don't know if you ever felt like it. It was really long. Um, Zyra attack speed buff. Uh, this is good because I've actually used. You, this is actually a really good early carry. If you get a tier two of this character of this champion. You can carry pretty hard early in the game and run some, like, really good early Blade Master builds. Um, I've had good experience with that. Uh, Zig's Total Mania increased to 45. This is because you could put double Seraphs on him and he would just alt inf infinitely. And when you combine that with the Demolitionist perk, it was really annoying because it was just locking... It was locking things down entirely for the game. And it was really annoying. Um... Zoe's total cost going down to 100. Not much to say there. Spell damage. Um, so there was something weird going on with Zoe. I'm going to kind of not go over it, but like Zoe was like really underperforming. No, it was Poppy. It was, my mistake. It was Pop Poppy is really underperforming in the early game, but overperforming in the late game. I haven't figured that one out. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say about that one. But uh, anyway. Uh, three stars Zoe should do more damage, so they're making three stars Zoe do more damage. Yay! Uh, tier two champions. Uh, Darius health increase. Uh, Darius was underplayed, so he's getting a health. He's getting a nice, tasty health bu boost. Um, Jin Zhao. Uh, total mana increase and spell damage buff. So why this is relevant? So this is essentially the nerf to protector. So, right now, the biggest issue with Protector was that this tiny, mini, little, itty-bitty mana cost allowed him to alt a lot. And the problem with Protector is every time you alt, you get a shield. So, if you, if you just maxed out on defensive items on him, he just never died. Like, he just kept alting, getting the shield back, and was just unkillable. So, in return... They are, they are nerfing him by increasing the cost of his mana, but increasing the damage of the spell to balance that out. Uh, good change, actually, because this, this actually was kind of a problem, because he really was unkillable at times. Uh, tier 3 champions. Um, this is actually a pretty big nerf to Azriel. Uh, Azriel was busted as fuck, and no one played Azriel. But Azrael was is kind of like the support champion that was destroying everything. Like, completely ruining builds the moment he ulted. And did a lot of damage for really no reason. Don't know what else to say. Uh, Kassadin, uh total mana. Um, this is the buff, because his total mana is going down to 80, which means he's going to ult a lot. It's an AoE disarm. It's an AoE disarm. I expect Cassidy to get more play. Uh, 
Shaco, uh, three star, uh, damage nerf. Um, a lot of people have looked at this and was like, these numbers don't make sense. They don't scale right. Well, that's because like at 450%, I think he does like 4k damage. Whereas this, he does like 1.8k damage. It's just how the damage scales. It, I don't know those exact numbers. I'm making them up, but it's something along those lines. Uh, this was this was a damage scaling issue. It just it's it's scaled way too high. Uh, Soraka ults more and heals for a little bit more. Probably doesn't do much to be honest with you. Velkaz, uh, total mana going down. Um, more to address that. This probably doesn't really change the fact that the AI on this champion is pretty borked. But hopefully makes it a little more playable. Maybe? I don't know. I've I've only experimented with Void uh, like a tiny bit. And um, was not overly impressed. And I don't think this really changes that. Uh, Wukong health. So Wukong is basically the worst tier 4 champion in the game right now. So he's getting a buff to health and becoming the most tankiest champion in the game right now. Um... I've got my eye on him because there are a few weird things that you can do with him. You can put a Morello on him. You can put a Morello on him. And you can put a Morello on him. And he just kind of Morellos everything. Other than that, I'm not sure what else to say. Uh, this is a big health boost. But there's no really good builds to run him in as a Vanguard Chrono. He's not a great carry. He's just kind of this... This, like, weird one-off unit that's hard to do anything with. Okay, now on to the meat and potatoes. What what this patch was really about, what everyone wanted. Buffs to Tier 5 champions. That's right, buffs. Okay, I gotcha. We, we're not buffing Tier 5 champions. We are destroying all of them. So, the biggest complaint about this patch uh, is that Tier 5 champions are pretty much the entire set. You could easily make an entire board of Tier 5 champions and win games because Tier 5 champions were just that powerful. Screw the synergies, put more f Tier 5 champions in the game. So, they are all getting nerfed. All of them. Well, I shouldn't say all of them because Thresh isn't on here, but well, we're ignoring Thresh like everyone else who plays this game. So, Relian Soul. Relian Soul is getting a... It's getting... It's, It'll be interesting to see how nerfed Aurelian Soul is getting. Because the first you have the spell damage nerf at um, 1 star and 2 star. The 1 star is probably a big deal. The 2 star is probably lesser of a big deal, but it's still a big deal. But the real change is this. So Aurelian Soul had a weighted targeting system. So what that meant was Aurelian Soul would randomly target something. And then it would weight its next targeting based on who it targeted before. So it was more likely to target the same champion twice than a different champion. Now that's becoming entirely random. Now, I don't know how they weighted it. And I'm going to be honest, I really ha weren't, was not paying attention to Aurelian Soul's targeting to really come up with a relevant response to how big a change this is. But this could be significant enough to make Aurelian Soul useless, or could be irrelevant enough to make Aurelian Soul just as good as it is now. There's there's a pretty pretty big line of how effective this is to how not effective this is, and we're just gonna have to see from from playing how how relevant this is. My money is on this really hurts Aurelian, Aurelian Soul, and unless you're playing Rebels, you're probably not going to be playing Aurelian Soul. Next, Echo. Um, tiny, tiny nerfs here to the spell damage, and there's a reason for that that we'll get into later. Uh, Gangplank. Yeah, we're destroying Gangplank. So, Gangplank's uh, total mana is going up to 175 which is actually absurd so the first the first strike is still going to cost you gonna you have to build up 100 mana the second strike is going to cost you 175 mana which is completely absurd uh next the spell damage is getting completely destroyed and completely thrown into the ground 
two-star Gangplank will do less damage than one-star Gangplank did before. This is complete and utter destruction of Gangplank, and it is rightfully earned, because Gangplank was absurd. Um, Lulu attack speed, so, uh, Mort has really interesting things to say about Lulu, that, um, Lulu is actually one of the most effective tier 5 champions, and it's in most winning champion slots. My guess is that's more a say on how good Mystic is right now, rather than how good Lulu is. Now, that's just kind of my initial thought. But, um, they saw fit to nerf Lulu. I don't really see an issue with this, because usually Lulu first salt, and you either win off that, or you lose because it wasn't enough. Uh, Misfortune, uh, attack speed nerf, um, also getting the gangplank treatment and increasing the max, um, the total mana cost. Yeah, that's really high. That said, I'm still not a fan of how Misfortune spell damage functions. I don't like that it... I don't like this percentage-based damage. I'd rather it be, like, a set damage over time. But this is this is pretty much what we have to work with for now. Um, anyway, it did get pr nerfed relevantly. I don't think this is actually that significant. It, it looks significant, but it probably isn't, in my opinion. More relevant will is this this mana nerf if you can survive the first alt then you're usually going to um smash you you can smash through it you have a chance to smash through everything i guess i should say all right on the items so morello and red buff getting um burn damage getting nerfed a bit um there's a handful of champions that can take significant advantage over morello not so much red buff i actually don't think there's a lot of champions that take advantage of red buff there, there's a lot that take advantage of morello so, um, it's gonna get nerfed. Sorry, guys. I got a cough. Static Shiv, uh, five damage buff. Doesn't seem like much. Adds up quickly. It's as general with Static Shiv. Static Shiv can add up quickly. And there's some other buffs coming to Static Shiv that we'll get to in a second. Uh, War Mag's health regen going from 4% to 5%. Um,. I think that was probably a function of how HP worked in set 2. There was a couple champions, <laughs> a druid, in the early game that would just gain life faster than anything could damage them. So, I, I think they probably thought that they could turn, turn this back, and it will be fine. It might be. It probably is. It's, it's, it's minor, but in the long run of a match, if something with Warmog is alive, this adds up pretty quick. Next, and probably my favorite, my favorite change of this patch. Eco, Aurelia, Lucian, Jin Zhao, and Echo again, because we can. Um, their ults now, now trigger Static Shiv, Rage Blade, and Hurricane. So, the ults of these, these uh, four slash five champions... They, they're basic attacks, so their animation, the way they function is like, they're just, they're just basic attacks. There's nothing really that special about them outside the fact that they're triggering in some weird manner. So Echo time stops, hits everyone, Aurelia rushes at somebody and bops them in the face. Lucian shoots a couple bullets at people and does a dash. Jin stabs people a few times. So they're all just kind of attacks, not too fancy. But now they get buffs from all of these. So this is this is amazing. So putting I, I'm just imagining like putting these on an echo and just watching some of the chaos that happens. So if you have if you have if your opponent has eight champions alive and you have a rage blade on echo, he swings at everyone and gets an eight stack buff on, on rage blade. Seems good, guys. Um I could say the same thing about um Shiv. I mean, Jin Zhao plus Shiv means a free trigger off it. It's probably still not that good. Probably more relevant is putting it on Aurelia or Lucian. Actually, Lucian, Lucian is probably the most interesting one of these to get the buff because you have to also remember um, how the blaster, uh, the blaster class works. So you get with with blaster, you get additional attacks, like. This adds up really quickly if you can trigger... And um, I believe on a previous patch, 
it wasn't the most recent one, but the one before this, uh, Lucian's attacks now, um, uh, Lucian's, uh, how do I want to put this? There was an issue with Lucian where his attack, his, his, his ult did not count as a basic attack in terms of the blaster trait. Now his ult counts as a basic attack in terms of both the blaster trait and these items. So it can add up really quickly on a Lucian, and it's something that we might have to watch that you might want to watch out for for like really early high end Lucian carries. All right, uh, champions now celebrate when they're victory. Yay! Uh, they updated Grave Splash Art bugs. So some of these bugs are very notable. Hands of Justice Healing no longer scales with AP. I'm just going to scratch my head and look away. Now, this one is very big. Rebel Shield <laughs> no longer scales with AP. I was in shock when I found out that Rebel Shield was scaling with AP. That... Ah! That's upsetting. <laughs> that's upsetting to find out right now. Um, this is actually probably a really big nerf to Rebel. Like, a serious nerf to Rebel. Uh, oh, Lucian's Pursuit now counts as Blaster. I thought it was the previous patch. It's actually this patch where uh, Lucian's all now triggers attacks um, for the purposes of Blaster trait. Ah, we figured it out, guys. Um, misfortune targeting. We're going to continue to talk about misfortune targeting being bad for some people and murdering fields for everyone else. Uh, Aurelian Soul, GA triggers. I hadn't seen this one. Um... Tooltip, tooltip, tooltip. Hexblade, now... Okay, so Hexblade wasn't healing people with shields. Or wasn't healing when it was hitting things with shields. Which is a problem when Hyper Roll Protector was a pretty popular build. Yeah. 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 Space Fire is over during right gold when attempting to deal lethal damage to Fiora, who is invulnerable. So... I've seen the hilarious videos from this. This is a good fix. Because I did not want to be a part of that. And then on top of that, they made some quick changes to the mobile corner, because I haven't played mobile yet. Anyway, so that is my thoughts on this patch. Um, it's a good patch, overall. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think there's only a handful of things that weren't touched that I would have liked to have seen touched. Um... I think there was a lot of complaints that cybernetic wasn't wasn't touched in this in this patch. I think it's generally considered that cybernetic's an A tier build, um, like right behind rebels, and it really didn't get touched at all. If anything, it might have gotten better. Um, so I yeah yeah I don't know what to say. It, it's kind of. I think they probably should have looked into nerfing Cybernetic, but I think the the way they're looking at it is they probably would rather nerf the champions than nerf the Cybernetic buff itself. Because Cybernetic's actually, like... The cybernetic can be, like, really tricky if you're, like, low elo to understand and how to logically play. Whereas at, at high elo, it, it plays pretty fluidly and very interesting. So I, I hope they kind of look into Cybernetic later. Um, so they didn't touch Rebel. It got nerfed. It got pretty much destroyed in this patch without actually touching the Rebel um, trait, which is interesting to me. Um, probably what I was most sad about was they didn't do anything with Star Guardian. So I actually really like playing Star Guardian, but it's not good at all. Um, your carry is, is Syndra, and she's not. The biggest issue with Star Guardian is that you don't have a front line. Like, you have, you basically have Nico is your only front line. Um, Nico and Poppy are your only front line in that build, so you have to figure out how to build a front line out of it. And one of the biggest issues is that Poppy is a vanguard and Nico is a protector. So, you, so you're running Star Guardian 6, but you're, you can't get, like, 4 protector or 4 vanguard because you're, you're split between this vanguard and protector. Um,. Void wasn't touched. I'd look for them to do something with Void. Because uh, right now Void doesn't... Void is Void is fun to watch and not very good to play. Other than that, I think we're probably pretty good. I, I, I You know, the other thing they could touch is probably Sorcerer. Uh, Six Sorcerer is a total bait. 
but Force Sorcerer is something I think would be interesting to see more of, and you really only see it in Star Guardian. Um, the problem with Sorcerer is that there's no tanky Sorcerer outside of... Probably the most tanky Sorcerer is... Um, uh, what's her name? The one Star Guardian, uh, Fox. Ari. Yeah. And maybe Annie. But, like, if, you, if you're running Sorcerer with Annie, you're going to have a mech. Um, I think the only other change I might have wanted to see is, like, the very high-end levels of the mech. Uh, getting getting the HP reduced a little bit, or changing how um, GA works with mech. I don't think GA should work with mech. Either GA shouldn't work with mech, or they need to tone the HP levels down on mech. That's kind of my thought on mech. I, I like mech for what it is, but it's, the, it's very, very hard to kill a mech, especially when you're running, like, front lines, because one alt from a mech just completely wrecks your front line. There's almost nothing you can do. You lose your entire front line to the first mech alt, and if you can't kill the mech before that first mech alt goes off, I mean, you're pretty much screwed. Your only other shot's to blow up the back line, and, I mean, even if you blow up the back line, then everyone just tanks out on the mech, and you, you lose your entire front line. It's, it's a real issue, I think, with mech, is how, how badly mech wrecks front lines. And that front lines need a little bit, little bit better shot against mech. And I think the best way to do that would be to lower mech HP just a tiny bit. It doesn't even have to be a lot, just a tiny bit. Or um, fix how GA works with mech. I actually just don't like how GA works with mech. I, I think it's very frustrating to watch and play. I hate GA overall. I think it's very GA is very angry and frustrating to play against. But anyway, that's my thoughts on. This patch, patch 10.7, and dear God, this video went 45 minutes, and I am actually mad at myself right now. Alright, I'm going to stop this.